What is good, y'all? It's your boy Cobb, aka Double Flamingo, aka The Goat, here to talk about the second season of the Pussy Draft League because the regular season is now over. We are entering into playoffs. Um, in the process of switching over to playoffs, many changes have happened, many team switch ups have occurred, and by many, I mean one per team. And we have the seating for what the playoff bracket will be looking like. Now, because this week there will be no game being played, because we have an off week from playing games, I instead am going to go into what I think is going to happen during playoffs, who I think is going to win, and how the matches I think are going to go. So, yeah, this is going to be a very different style of video. Uh, probably more of a podcast style, so if you just like listening to my voice, then this is the video for you. Got some nice little, little lo-fi chill beats in the background to keep it from getting too intense or too empty um but let's start looking at things so i finished off this season uh in first place with my dq win last week versus the new york Neuverns, i ended up in first place tied with daniel in terms of score and differential but because i beat him i end up in first place so that's great love that for me that's amazing um but it really didn't bode well for my bracket so let's look at my bracket in particular. So first up, first seed versus eighth seed, as per usual, I'm playing against the San Juan Samurats, and if I win that, I have to play the winner of the Pugin Corporatory and the New York Neuverns. So this is, all right, let's go match by match. Let's talk about why the matchup between myself and the San Juan Samurats is not that great. I'm gonna use this moment to pull up some um, additional graphics so you can see the teams that we're both working with. Uh, so let me do that. So, looking at these teams, um, his big offensive threat is Baxcalibur, and my team, through the changes that I've made, has not gotten any less weak to Baxcalibur. Um, it still gets the plus one, it still Icicle Spears through most of my stuff. The only difference between now and then is I picked up Screamtail. Uh, Screamtail, which is replacing the Pelipper, which has been relegated since I stopped using Rain. Um, but Screamtail's sort of a check. If I get a chip, then it's it's not really a Bax check. Bax is really strong. Um, my team is a little bit better into him this time compared to last time, but not as much as I am thinking. Um, he picked up Darmantan to replace his Aspothra, which is an interesting pick, I believe. Um, although a strong offensive fire type does do pretty solid damage to my team. Um, my only fire resists are Shifu, which doesn't really want to switch in on a strong fire type, and Tyrantrum, which I guess that's fine to switch in, but it doesn't like a superpower, it doesn't like a U-turn, and uh, Tyrantrum is pretty bad in the match regardless. Ultimately, uh, and I can pull the VOD from the last game that we did, I'm going to do that here. Ultimately, there is not much that is preventing this game from going similar to how it went last time, where um, he gets chip on my Ferrothorn. Uh, let's let's skip ahead a little bit more. Um, yeah, so my Ferrothorn comes in, he, he gets my set, he gets his, his Aurora Veil up, and I just can't do enough damage to Baxcalibur. Um, the difference between this time and last time is I'm more likely to be running something like um, Iron Defense plus Body Press, but ultimately he gets the plus one, he starts clicking Icicle Spear, I start taking a bunch of damage, um, and it's sort of a wrap for me, because uh, he's just faster than my entire team and can kill everything. Uh, so yeah, I need to be very careful with how I play this, because um, it's very precarious and very dangerous for me. Um, but yeah, uh, if I were to give an edge to any one competitor here, it would definitely be him. So I project that in this little matchup for the first round of playoffs, I have to finger through all the tabs. I'm gonna give it to him. I think he's gonna win and I'm gonna get knocked into losers immediately. So let's put that in right there. Um, so let's look at the next matchup. The next matchup of all of these would be the Pukumuku Purgatory the Pukumuku Purgatory versus the New York Neuverns. Love saying these names. Um, so, last time that this went down, I believe the Pukumuku Purgatory lost. Um, I'm gonna pull up the VOD for that game, so you guys can see that. Uh, Pukumuku Purgatory is somewhere. Here. Week eight they played, and it was a interesting game. 
Um, Glaring Darmanitan goes down turn one because he stays in on a choice card for Annihilate. So that's sort of a throw. Um, because he shouldn't be losing his Garm turn one. Garm could have done great damage to Latios, could have done great damage to a lot of things on his team, uh, but he just sort of sacked it for no reason. The Lando I had gravity, probably with the intention of hitting this with a ground move, and this with a ground move, and this with a ground move, but it's a little slow to get going, so it's a bit dubious, and Latios just sort of does a bunch of damage to everything on his team. Thunderbolt plus, plus uh, Ice Beam, the little Bolt Beam combination, kind of just kills everything, uh, as you can see him doing right here. And Latios is base 350 speed, which is faster than all the stuff that he chose to bring. Um, we can look back at his team. I'm gonna put screenshots. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna change the formatting of how I'm I'm <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna edit and post because I know what the teams are, but you guys don't know what the teams are necessarily. Um, if you look at the rest of the team, he could have potentially brought something else. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna look back at that. Uh, what else could he have brought? In? He could have brought in his Galvantula to get up webs, which maybe could have done something, but ultimately, like, he brought just about the best team he could have. Um, Chansey could could have been good on his team instead of whatever he brought over Chansey. I believe he brought Moltres, um, because Latios needs Psy Shock in order to get through that. Uh, but still, you're potentially living, you can get a, you can get a para off, because Chansey can be decently physically bulky uh, with Eviolite, so it's... It's a bad matchup, I'd say, for Bionic, um, but it's definitely doable, because um, if you consider, like, look at how he, he starts getting himself back in the game. Slow Broken Sword Regenerate Health um, through Regenerator, like, it got knocked down to 7% to uh, versus the Latios previously, but now it's back up to full. Um, when you have a mom with a generator, you're never necessarily out. So if he cleans up his play a little bit, then I can see him taking it. Uh, and I do think that he definitely has the advantage here because like Mawile um, shreds most of the stuff that he has. Uh, Venusaur is the only good check uh, if he doesn't sack this here to, to Venusaur. Um, but if he plays well into the Venusaur with stuff like Galarian, Galarian Darmantan and Moltres and potentially... I don't know what else. What else could he play into? Because it's it's a really, really strong. Um, it's really strong in this matchup. The the Mega Venusaur. Uh, he needs a good Mega Venusaur answer. Is my executive take. Keeping Glaring Diamantin around, even with Thick Fat, Icicle Crash is going to do pretty decent damage. So that would probably do him pretty well. Um, but yeah, uh, once this gets out of the way. The rest of his team sort of falls over to Mawile plus Garm plus Lando. So I think Vinicky has a lot of shots to get ahead and stay ahead, especially if he makes good plays and especially if he takes down his main threats early. Um, if he positions his Venusaur really well, then I'd say he has the edge in this matchup. Um, for the sake of precedent, and because this ends up getting like so close at the end, um, and by so close, I mean 4-0, I guess. Uh, Actually, his ape is really strong, his Venusaur is really strong, his Latios is really strong. I want to give it to Bionic, I really do, but I think he's going to lose round one to um, Vinicky, which would mean two upsets in a row, which is kind of crazy. So, I would definitely give it to Vinicky for this matchup um, and the New York Northerns. Okay. So let's get into the next match. The next match is versus is the third seed fighting against the sixth seed, uh, the Failings Failings versus the Skibidi Toilet Slow Bros. Now this is a rematch from I believe week three. I'm gonna pull up the vod for that, uh, or it's week four, week four, because both of these players were undefeated. Um, when we were doing the Swiss style bracket, they were completely undefeated, and um, they. Uh, <laughs> had to play each other since they were the only undefeated teams. So the winner of this was the last undefeated team left in the league. And spoilers, um, Seoul won this game. If you skip forward to like turn 50, Seoul won this game pretty handily. Um, let's go back to, to turn one and look at what went wrong. So one thing here is Hitmontop. Hitmontop is a interesting pick. It's not a mon he has anymore. Uh, if you look at his team now, he changed up his team a little bit since then. Um, no longer has him on top. Instead, he's rocking a combination of Savali, which is a, a newer pickup. Uh, Weezing is a newer pickup. And 
I think just those two are, are the newest mods that he has. Um, but it's a really messy matchup for him regardless, because Celestila. Um, Celestila, in and of itself, Sneasler can't do much to get through it. It has to be close combat, and it has to be boosted in order to do decent damage to Celesteela if it's defensive like it is in the first match that he brought. Um, Rillaboom, Grassy Glide is going to do good damage to Samurott, but like it's decently walled by Miltank unless you have Drain Punch. Um, but Rillaboom's still like Rillaboom's still like fine here. Um, Dozo isn't at its best because it's his physical attackers kind of can get through it some of the time, and his special attackers like Darkrai and, and Celesteela and like Keldeo, which he didn't even choose to bring, um, can be pretty good. Um, Chiyu's pretty good here. I'm just going to let this, this battle play uh, while I explain this. Chiyu's pretty decent here. Uh, Florgus is no longer on Soul's team. If you look back at uh, the changes that he made, Soul has picked up in Florgus's place uh, Mimikyu, which his team's looking a lot more Chiyu weak now. Um, Choice Scarf Chiyu can sort of do numbers um, just by clicking Overheat. Samurai doesn't want to take an Overheat that well. Uh, Mill Tank, even if it's Thick Fat, needs to be decently defensive in order to take an Overheat well. Um, Galarian Sloking is your best option, but still, you're weak to Dark Pulse, and Overheat's still going to do a, a decent jump anyways. Um, so it's... Soul has definitely made the matchup harder for himself here um, than he needed to. Ultimately, this is going to be a battle because, like, if, I, if I'm Fritz, I don't think Spectre is coming, like, with the last battle. In the last battle, he chose not to bring it. Um, he instead uh, brought stuff like his and Electro and stuff like that. Uh, I'd say a team similar to this is probably likely again, except in this slot, he's probably going to have... Let's look at his team one more time. Probably going to have something like Silvali. Could have something like Weezing. Um... Probably Silvali Electric is decent here, um, just because the stabs are good versus stuff like uh, versus things like Celesteel versus things like Samurott versus things like Keldeo, which hasn't come. Um, or he could just be some other type to try and punish. Like Poison's almost decent here. Um, Dark is fine. It's it's interesting. He. Sort of gets mollywop by Celesteel this game. Celesteel is the, the main contributing factor to why Fritz lost. Uh, if I skip through, look at how much time he spends on the field. Um, as long as Hasbro's come away, Celesteel comes back, and it's, it's just a Celesteel show for the most part. Um, so much pivoting, Jesus. But, yeah. I still give the edge to Soul here. I think Fritz is going to definitely keep it a lot closer than the, I believe, 4 0 that, that this ended up as last time, 4 or 5 0. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to keep it closer than the 5-0 last time because he has more prep. He's going to bring hazard control uh, to stop this from getting spikes up and this from getting rocks up uh, and keeping them up. Because if you look at his hazard control now, he has Savali, which can have defog. He has Weezing, which I believe gets defog. Um, and he has Cyclozar as a spinner. Um, so it's definitely going to be, it's still going to be hard for Fritz. Uh, and it's a little bit harder for Soul, but I would definitely give the edge to Soul here. So let's dial that in. I think that Soul, Soul definitely has the win. Um, okay. So that is the third match of quarterfinals, or of, of uh, yeah, quarterfinals. Um, so let's look at the last little match of the quarterfinals witness quarterfinals tier uh the garchomp gladiators versus the gooey Gucci gang now i don't know if these two have played yet um you guys get to see a little look into the sheet that we've been using throughout this season um through me looking at here they have played and daniel won 3-0 so let's pull up the vod for that so we can look over that and see how that is um gcg versus ggg where is that at Right here, week five. So week five was a while ago in the season. Um, Daniel still had basically the same team. Uh, nobody Alex basically had the same team. Um, it's I remember there being something off with what he brought here. So let's look let's look at the matchup in on paper compared to what they actually brought in the game. Um, so the thing about uh, Nobody Alex's team is it's very, 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 very offensively threatening. 
Um, Chen Pao is one of the best offensive mons in the game. Zero Aura is extremely fast. He picked up Mega Beedrill recently over his Zuin Zoroark, which is really, really fast. Uh, and it can actually do decent work versus Daniel's team. Um, well, it's definitely had better matchups. Um, it's faster than Weavile, which is good. But it gets sort of walled by Fortress. It gets walled by... Uh, Golden Go, definitely. It needs Drill Run in order to hit Golden Go, so Air Balloon Golden Go gets slightly stronger. Um, but, yeah, uh... I don't know. It's just... Daniel's Volcarona has very few solid checks here once like if Diancie doesn't come and you get or you just get chip on Di Diancie Volcarona can easily win um Zero Aura needs to be special in order to or it needs to be physical in order to beat Volcarona but Volcarona can be running Fizz Def. it's also Garchomp Garchomp isn't at its best here because it can't really break through Suicune that well and it can die to like Ice Shard from Chen Pao pretty easily so scale shot scaling won't be great um Golden Go is not at its best um Ultimately, Chen Pao forces, like, you have, Chen, you have Chen Pao, and then you have um, the OG Chen Pao Weavile, uh, and neither of them are, well, Chen Pao's always good. Both of them are going to be doing decent work to the other team, um, but Chen's definitely going to be doing more work than Weavile is here, respectively. Um, let's look at that VOD that I mentioned and then didn't bring up. Um, so, out of this team, I see nothing wrong structurally with, with Daniel's team here. Um, with Nobody Alex's team, this is also fine. Uh, I think both of them brought the appropriate things last time. I don't remember how this battle went, so we're going to be watching it together. Um, Serp leads pretty good. Volcarona can come in pretty easily on Serp, though, because Serp's best coverage move is uh, Dragon Pulse, which isn't going to do much if he starts quivering. Um, scared out by the Volca or scared up by the Diancy. Naturally, that's good. But Diancy has 25% chip on it already, so it's not a switch in forever. Uh, the Flash Cannon defense drop is funny. Yeah, he can just do the song dance forever because, like, Volt getting paralyzed is really bad. That's a great read. Um, but if enough chip comes from this Diancy, although not necessarily now that the, the Volk is paralyzed, if he were to keep this Volk healthy, it'd be doing a bajillion, bazillion damage. Um, okay, Azu comes in on the Diancy. That's pretty fair, pretty good. Doesn't have a lot of great player off switch ins. This barely survives. Yeah. I look at the team, there are no fairy resists. So, Ozzy's pretty strong. And are there even any fairies that he didn't bring? There's Cobalion, but that's not a resist. Let's look at this. Beedrill is not a resist. It has no defenses. Yeah. Azu does really, really strong here. Um, also, he doesn't have that much that can break uh, Porygon 2 that well. Um, all of his physical attackers, none of them are fighting types, except for Cobalion, but Cobalion doesn't have the juice to get through it. So... It's going to be sort of lacking in that regard. Um, Ozu's really strong here. Porygon's hard to break. Volk now that's paralyzed makes this harder for Daniel, but let's see. Okay, Volt Absorb. Phenomenal into the Zera Aura. Uh, stops it from really becoming any sort of threat. Close combat, yeah, bounces off the Porygon too pretty easily. Um, just allows in stuff like Sandy Shocks, which completely walls Zera Aura forever. Um, now that there's chip coming on the Serp, it's relied on its leftovers to stay healthy. Um, the sub is good, I guess, in order to get chip on the Volcarona, but Volcarona is always going to be outlasting superior. You only have four, or you only have seven, um, Syntheses, or Syntheses. You only have seven Leaf Storms, and then you can't hit anything, uh, unless you're running Dragon Pulse. So it's, like, like, what are we doing here? Um, staying in on this was ill-advised, because now your best check to Azu is gone. Um, this is still a defensive check, but offensively, you're not, you're not a switch in. You, you died at two play roughs. Um, Leaf Storm does knock it out, but it's, sacking this to Garchomp was not necessarily the move. Um, okay. So this potentially can be a pivotal game, or piv pivotal, t ugh. This potentially could be a pivotal turn in the game, because if Chen Pao comes in and clicks Swords Dance, in any game ever, the nature of Chen Pao, um, it can just win. Um, it's harder with Azu, because Azu does resist both dark and ice and fighting. Um, but still, if he's like black glasses with adamant nature, crunch, sucker punch, ice shard, something like that, um, there aren't really any good good checks to a gem pal plus one or plus two. So let's see what he clicked here. Just crash. 
yeah, that still does a billion. So he's probably banded um, in this game. I think banded would be a mistake just because Swords Dance is so... Like, Swords Dance is so I can just instantly win some of the time. Um, he needed that flinch in order to win, but now Chen Pao's dead. And he proceeds to lose this game, uh, as we know, because we saw that the result was 3-0. Serpent gets a nice little revenge kill, but, like, Weavile comes in, clicks tri Triple Axel. Uh, unless this is Helmet, it's, like... He doesn't have enough offensive juice to get through his stuff. And he doesn't have any, like he doesn't have enough offensive juice to muscle through Porygon 2, especially. Um, nor does he have enough offensive juice to get through Garchomp and Weavile before it smashes his team. Um, so I think this matchup is probably gonna go similarly to how it went here. Uh Daniel is the better player, and not much really has to change on his regard. Uh I would say he played this game a little sloppier than he should have. Um, letting the Volcarona get paralyzed is dubious. Um, if anything, I think Mandibuzz could be a slightly higher priority bring over... Well, I don't know if it's... I don't know. It's weird. Because I think Garchomp's actually pretty bad here. Um, if there's a week to leave Garchomp behind, it would be here. Because Garchomp isn't really ever going to sweep. There's a Diancie, there's a Chen Pao with, that can be Rocking Ice Shard, there's a Suicune that's pretty physically defensive, there's a Superior that can glare it, and it's faster, and can do good damage with Leaf Storm. Um, Scale Shot probably isn't knocking out a Torn, a torn T in one. Um, the best thing that it does is take out Zero Aura, but you have Sandy Shocks for that, so it's like, what are we doing here, you know? Um, and you can get, you can get burned by stuff like Scald too, so... If there's anything that Daniel might change, I'd say maybe he benches Garchomp for something like, I don't know. Um, Golden Go could be a potential bring. Mandibus could be a potential bring. Um, but like, he doesn't really have to change anything with his team. And Mega Beedrill isn't really a pickup that's going to save uh, Nobody Alex from losing here. So I think that this is also edged towards Daniel. Um, so I'm going to give him the advantage. Uh, I didn't. I closed out the tab that I was using. Oops. Bear with me. <sighs> I just sort of sat down and started recording this, so I hope you are enjoying the vibe so far. So let's get to the loser side of bracket. Um, and let's plug in the losers that I have of these matches into the loser side of bracket so far. So I, the loser of A, will fall down to here. Lego City, Ludicolos, one. First seed loses round one, might go 2 who could really say. Uh, Pikachu Purgatory loses here. That's a loser of B, they go here. seed um loser of c i believe was the skibidi toy the slow bros and the loser of d was the gooey gooey gang okay so let's look at these losers round one matchups from top to bottom so daily muse versus sable eye gems this is a match that happened um late in the season let's pull up the vod for that I believe it happened week nine or week 10. I think it was week nine. Yeah, right here. So both of these teams are insanely threatening. Um, like Mew sort of has, it's it's like almost, it's got potential for, for hyper offense potentially. Um, this team is also like potentially hyper offense with, with Cartana and Deoxys Speed and Mega Gardevoir and, and that type of stuff. Um, his team is just a mess. Uh, let's look at the teams in detail before I go into this match. Um, so Mew, Mew has, he has Tapu Lele, which is one of the strongest special attackers to ever exist in Pokemon. Iron Moth, which is probably a stronger special attacker. He's got Mega Diancie, just really, really solid special offensive pressure. Um, and if you look at Mika's team, his specially defensive mon is Gardevoir? That's about it. Gastrodon. Gastrodon is a special defensive mon, but Iron Moth gets Energy Ball, so is it even really a special defensive mon? Um, it's... If you look at his defenses, 
Umbreon is enough to take anything that Deoxys Speed wants to do, anything that Huzumi Zoroark wants to do. It doesn't like Infernape, and it doesn't like Rabombi if it sets up, um, but it can definitely take a Rabombi at plus zero. Um, and he's also got Gudra, which if you slap an Assault Vest on it, can take anything but really Specs, Dragology, Dracos um, from his special attackers. And its typing is good enough to where uh, Infernape isn't really going to be that big of an issue, um, which he didn't even bring in the match in question that I'm looking at. Uh, Gorgeist sort of hard counters Kartana from really doing anything. Um, and Dragonite also sort of stops Kartana from being a huge threat. It needs stuff like Smart Strike and needs to be boosted in order to do enough damage. Um, I believe this match went kind of silly. Um, so he leads Gorgeist, goes into this on the Acid Armor, which is interesting. Um, Sludge Waves still do a billion, even though he's not any sort of boosting item. Um, if he was a boosting item, it would be even better, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, I believe this game... Okay, I know what happened this game. So Mew potentially threw, because... Um, well, first of all, sloppy play from both of them. Sludge Wave does more damage than Shadow Ball here because Adaptability Boost with the higher base power move is stronger than super effective. Um, and you can get a Poison, which would be great on the Mew. Um, and he gets really greedy with his Calm Minds. Um, he sits here and, like, getting the plus two, I think that's fine. Um, but when you look versus the rest of his team, like, okay, well, that, 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 that's, that's actually fine. Um, I'm mistaking this for another match because he doesn't get greedy. Uh, he just dies to Kartana. Oops. Um, free Kartana boost. So, but this still, like, sits on, on Kartana forever. Um, knockoff does big damage in one, but it can just, like, it lives that even at plus one with an Expo Bell boost, and it just gets a little burn. Um, and if Kartana is burnt, it doesn't really do anything. Um, granted, if the burn miss, misses, it can be kind of dangerous, but Dragonite is always there to revenge kill it, potentially. Um, so, <laughs> the rest of this game is sort of a, a formality. This is a Choice Scarfed Iron Moth which gets every Fiery Dance boost and just gets the sweep because of it. Um, Gardevoir is not a switch-in because crit. And boost again. Um, so that's crazy. Um, honestly, this match could have maybe gone a little bit closer because if he didn't get that crit, if he didn't get that, if he didn't get all those boosts, then Gardevoir, I think, can win in the Sack War, potentially. Um, it's a weird matchup. Both players kind of play weird. Uh, they bring kind of unorthodox builds. Um, I think, like, Mika's offense gets more stifled than Yu's offense does. Um, as you see, where are his fire resists, aside from Gastrodon, which he didn't bring? Um, if you just... If it's a hyper offense off, I think Mew has the edge. Um, especially considering that Gardevoir has to hold a Megastone. Um, and Kartana gets shut down by Gorgeist. And there are no hard shutdowns to Mew's offense. So I give this edge to Mew. I definitely think that Mew has the edge here. Uh, so that would make Mew the winner there. Eliminating the Sableye Gems to tied for, I think, 13th place. Something like that. Um, that math is mathing. So Daily Mews would advance in my projections. Uh... So, next match in the loser's bracket would be the Krusty Crustles versus the Straw Hat Slow Kings. I believe this has happened already. Uh, let's look at when that has happened. So, uh, let's look at their teams first. Sort of shifting the formatting here. Lucas has a really threatening team. Uh, Iron Bundle, Lando T, is, and Megalopunny is, is really good for a little offensive mixture. Um, if he wanted to, which he hasn't, because he usually runs Booster Energy on his Iron Bundle, um, these two, like, like flip turn, U-turning all over everything until one of them forces a kill is really dangerous in a lot of matchups. But if you look at the Krusty Krustles team, it is arguably the most disgusting team in the league. Um, Tapu Koko and Mega Charizard Y enables all the Paradox Pokemon on his team, which is Iron Leaves, Walking Wake, and Iron Treads. Uh, Halucha gets enabled by Electric Terrain. Uh... <laughs> King Gambit is just King Gambit. He has won so many games off of uh, King Gambit coming in, getting the plus two, and then just doing the thing it doesn't owe you with Sucker Punching. Um, and Hisui and Arcanine is like, if you don't have a switch in, comes in, clicks Head Smash, clicks Flare Blitz, 
and that's dangerous. And if you look at for his head smash switch in, there is none. Uh, this doesn't. This doesn't take a head smash. This doesn't take a head smash. This doesn't want to take a flare blitz. This doesn't want to take a flare blitz. Um, it's really, it's really rough for Lucas here. Um, let's pull up how this game went last time so we can see. Uh, but I don't think it went well for Lucas. So the Straw Hat Slow Kings versus the Sableye, not Sableye Gems. The uh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, so last time he opted not to bring Walking Wake or um, Iron Leaves, which I think I think not bringing Iron Leaves is a bit of a throw. Um, leaves with booster speed or just like getting a Trailblaze off, it can be faster than, like it can sort of kill everything and there's no strong enough priority to really stop it. Lando team makes Leaves kind of have an annoying game, but still like, I think Leaves is pretty good here. Uh, Definitely, although I wouldn't really say there's anything that he should have brought over because Mega Charizard Y sort of just flamethrowers all over most of the team. It makes um, Flare Blitz is a lot harder to switch in on because he has one fire resist on this team and it's usually specially defensive instead of physically defensive. Um, Halucha also has a great time clearing up. Lando has to exert a lot of pressure this game in order to do anything um, and it's hard when there's like... You, you have to, you're, you're over, overworked with your Lando. Um, I don't know who won this game, but let's see. Oh, so he was, he was a jack pack on his, uh, on his <laughs> Sui and Arcanine in order to win the lead, the lead, uh, mind game, which is really funny. Um, that's actually great because, um, it covers the potential iron bundle lead, um, by forcing a mind game of like, am I Scarf? Uh, if, if I'm Scarf, you don't want to stay in and then something has to take a head smash um, or something gets burned. Uh, and a Jack Pack sword covers the Lando switch in like every time, which is great. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a solid bring. Uh, I don't know if we do it again because ultimately anything that you bring twice can be predicted. Um, so his Charizard dies turn one to a rock slide. That is a Scarf Lando or it's a modest um, Charizard. Uh, so substitute King Gambit with no leftovers. Very presumptuous, I'd say. Um, he has no way of getting health back on this Gambit, so it's not necessarily the best of moves to have sub with like i'm assuming lumberry um but you know we'll, we'll we'll let him cook especially like king gambit's amon where it wants all four of his move slots really really badly so it's not something you're going to be slapping slab on willy-nilly um but let's look at how this turn goes i'm assuming he just spores block punch oh that's fine that's fair gets a little chip on the top of coco which is fine and fair um Coco just has and gleams. That's also fine. He has no fairy resists, which is a common thing in this league. A lot of people don't have fairy resists on their team. Um, his fairy resist would be Magnezone, but Magnezone is bad here when there is a King Earth, when there is a uh, Halucha and a Arcanine and a uh, Charizard. So this is a defensive instead of offensive um, Arcanine set with rocks. The rocks are going to really do numbers here because now the spray loom is pressured in terms of how many times it can switch in. Um, Lando's going to get pressured if it's not boots. Um, you get to see if Clefable is unaware or magic guard, which is nice. And bundle if it's not boots, you just put it in range of a King Gambit um, Sucker Punch in the end game potentially, uh, which is nice. So he brings in his Ditto to intimidate, uh, which is great. Yeah, he just earthquakes with the with the, the little guy. Um, loses his Ditto to Triple Axel, which is unfortunate for him. But now there's a bunch of chip on the slow punny, so it's like. Like, what are you going to do? Um, E-Speed is nice for cleanup. Uh, the Slow King is sort of a sack of... Like, it's sort of a momentum stall. Uh, Scalding is nice, especially versus his team, because none of these mods want to get burned, and this Tapu Koko is taking a lot of damage. Um, but you are letting in Tapu Koko for free, which is allowing Halucha to potentially do damage in the late game. Um, you kind of have to go out in the Lando here on a potential bolt switch, which I think he does. No, he goes into the Fable. Interesting. Um, the Roost is good, too. Uh, keeping Coco around for longevity keeps your Halucha from ever being useless, which is great. Um, 
Lando comes in, Lando is not boots, it's Scarf, as we saw earlier, uh, he rock slides, does he get the flinch? He does, which I think sort of packs up this game for, uh, for Sweet AC. Um, unless he has Swords Dance on King Gambit and clicks it this turn, then I don't think there's a route to win, which he doesn't. Um, does he sucker or does he kowtow? Let's see. He suckers. Yeah, that's unfortunate for him. Good switch. Low party takes a bajillion damage. He saw Lutra is in without the terrain up, which is bad. Uh, I think he he barely realized that he didn't have the, the terrain up, but he's going to die to this triple axle with his Coco. Uh, there's too much pressure being exerted on too many of his bonds. Uh, this Arcanine not being boots means he has to take all this damage from rocks coming in. Like, so much of his team is weak to rocks. Uh, it's just pretty easy win for the straw hat slow kings here um this was this was like a week five game though and sweet ac is one of the more like one of the more improved players but i don't know i think if he navigated this team slightly better then it isn't as bad as it seems here like switching out there is insane like any good player, why would you switch out when you're at plus two in the face of the Slow King when it, your only route to win is staying in and potentially killing these acrobatics? Like, I guarantee you at, at freaking 67%, like a, a plus two acro from a Halucha is going to kill. Um, so that's wild play. Absolutely wild play. Oh, because he was going to die to the future site. But like, still, you don't need to... I missed the future site. That's my bad. Does he get the burn? He doesn't get the burn. Um, yeah, your Halucha is never fast enough in order to get through bundle so you really just need to like force that kill there and try and um he's choppleberry he's not even lum that's that's dubious that's not smart um with substitute you don't need choppleberry okay i think sweet ac's team is just absolutely terrifying um i don't think i think the reason he lost in this week is kind of mostly mismanaging and misplaying his options um lucas brought a pretty solid team probably one of the better teams he can bring but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement with sweet ac so if he puts more prep into um trying to win the match and if he cares about trying to get out of playoffs then i give the edge to sweet ac but it's still like if i were to, to put a pin on it i'd say this matchup's like 55 45 favor um and you're gonna, you're gonna know whose favorite is by the team builder, uh, or by the by the team preview. If you see in team preview a team that looks like it's throwing, if he has Aridos or if he brought Ditto over one of his shitmons, um, not over one of his shitmons, my bad. If he brought Ditto over one of his more threatening bonds like Iron Leaves, then I think that's a mistake. Um, or like over Walking Wake, which can potentially put more pressure on the Lando, which is sort of a big issue for his team i think i want to give the edge to sweet ac just because i think i think his team is is so good um and like if he brought a better set if like even in that game if he brought a better set on his king gambit uh instead of like sub no swords dance no leftovers um like if he had swords dance over substitute i think he wins that game like easily easily um especially if you had like to find over uh over supreme overlord to check the landorus um so i want to i, I want to give the edge to sweet ac and the crusty crustles so i'm gonna do that okay next game the ep electrodes versus the quill yourself this is a match that again has already happened and i believe it was a win for the ep electrodes last time it did uh, let's look at how it went. So, uh, I believe I have the match somewhere over here. Eep versus Quill Yourself. Another week seven rematch. Okay. So, uh, John Guy's team is pretty threatening. He doesn't have, he didn't bring Roaring Moon, which I think was a contributing factor to him losing because Roaring Moon, like if you look at this team and you look at Roaring Moon, aside from Drake's Old and Sand, there aren't any great switch-ins to 
you just clicking like Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, Crunch, um, Acrobatics. Or no, uh, fighting move or something. Or even just, just being banded with like you turning around and dealing a bunch of chip. Because one of the biggest issues with the EP Electrodes is it doesn't have a lot of longevity. Um, his team, if you get into an, a war of attrition, it loses. And John Guy has definitely like, he definitely has the tools to win a, a war of attrition. Um, let's look at his team so we can we can see that for certain. Um, Roar Moon didn't come. Blissey didn't come. Um, between Corviknight and Blissey and Tangrowth, he has really, really solid mons for potential stall off. If you watch my match uh, up here <laughs> from week two of my league where I played him and it went to 100 turns, you can see that it's definitely like, if he wants to play in the stall, he can totally play in the stall. Um, versus Potato, who his new pickup, Nihiligo, is decent here, but it's not great. Um, it solves the Volcano problem offensively, and it puts less pressure on his uh, Dracozolt to sort of do everything, because Dracozolt's kind of doing everything in this game, um, which is a problem, especially if he runs an item like Life Orb again, which gets him a bunch of chip. Um, so let's look at this game. I remember from this game, it took forever, because everyone was taking like three minutes to click moves on their turn, but yeah. Uh, Grimstar with Brick Break, that's fine. It's a good bring. Uh, getting Tyrantar out of the way is important for John Guy in order to stop, uh, Drake Zolt from potentially popping off at the end game. Uh, I think Ursaloon is not a bring, by the way, in the future, and a lowland executor is good, but not great. Uh, he doesn't have a great Draco switch in. Um, and Corviknight, which would be his Draco switch in, doesn't like taking a flamethrower. I think Reggie Drago is better in the slot, and um, he doesn't have a lonely executor anymore, so it's probably going to be taking the slot. Uh, without a light screen, that would have done great damage. But 35 is 35 is still respectably solid. Um, so uh, Drago's ult is in. It's probably just going to click Bolt Beak, and it's going to do great damage like that, which is fine. Uh, now you have to look for your Drago switch in. But instead, he just swaps out, which is totally fair. Um, this match goes a little slower. So he reads the Corviknight switch again with the Flamethrower, which is solid. Um, he's sort of just chipping himself with rocks, which is interesting. But he, he does get him to drop his own special attack with Leaf Storm, which is good. Um, so Dawnfang comes back in, takes rocks chip. Yuxi comes in on the on the curve to set back up screens, which is fair. Because the screens are going to be useful. Um, screens are useful because Volcanion is really dangerous, Madcham is really dangerous, and he wants screens so that they don't really uh, force stuff like Hatterene in order to... Or they, they don't force... He's trying to make sure that Volcanion and Mega Madcham don't put too much pressure on Hatterene to where it can't sweep. Because Hat is pretty good in this matchup. Um... Gets the pair on the Grimmsnarl here. That's that's dope. That's fine. That's fair. That's balanced. Um, okay. So now that he's in on Grim, he has a good uh, chance to start calm mining up because he's behind screens. He's chill. There's nothing that anything can really do to him. Um, like this Corv is doing basically zero, so he just gets the calm mine again, uh, which is great. Huge potential for a sweep here, because Draining Kiss plus Psyshock plus Mystical Fire is going to do a lot of damage to everything. Uh, Dawn Fan is not an answer. This is a sack. Which is great. Um, yeah, so he just gets the Draining Kiss, gets his health back, and boom, he's at plus two. He's at basically full health. The only thing that he has is Grimmsnarl, but Grimmsnarl needs to not get full parried. So, it's like... Hatterene, I think, still in this matchup. Uh, we don't need to watch the rest of the game. Um, spoilers, he just... Gets Drake Assault in eventually and starts doing big chip, big damage. Um, this gets two chipped from Volcanion, which stops it from winning, which is not great. But Sand is up with not a lot of turns left with the Tangrowth dead, with the with the Donphan dead. He's ran out of Bolt Beak switch ins, so he just Bolt Beaks his way to victory. Um, but oh yeah, the if you go back a few turns to the Grim Snarl. Um, this Grimmsnarl gets fully paralyzed on which turn? This turn? Yeah. 
which stops him from getting a screen up, which could potentially win in the game. Uh, the Bulbeak doesn't even kill, by the way. He need he needed the Sand Chip, which is crazy. Um, also, there's a big throw here. If this Magicham had Fake Out or Bullet Punch, then he loses his Drake Result, and I believe loses the game because this doesn't have. This only has U-Turn, which can't hit the Volcanion, and this is at low percent health and slower than Volcanion. So, ultimately. <laughs> I have insider knowledge, I have insider technology. From what I know of the players, John Guy, uh, coach of Team Cool Yourself, said that he's going to be trying when he gets to the playoffs. And I think he didn't bring his best team there. I think if he tried a little harder, if he made the right plays, even with that team that he brought, which isn't the best team, and with making some eh, plays during that game, I think he... I think he has the edge in the matchup, and I think he's going to win. So... I'm putting the cool yourselves ahead. It sucks because this is my boy. This is my guy. And I don't want him to lose round one. But ultimately, I think I think he was sort of punting for most of the regular season. So playoffs are a chance for the cool yourselves to shine. Um, especially with the team he has. If he brought something like Roaring Moon, he would have done a lot better. If he played a little better into the uh, Drake Result, he would have done a lot better. And he has the tools to do that. Dragozol is the main offensive mon that threatens his team. Uh, if he just, like, keeps ship on it with hazards, keeps ship on it with Mega Mega Cham, uh, priority moves, then he'll do fine. Um, oh, this is the wrong... I clicked the wrong sheet. Oops. T I want this sheet. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. I, put, I give the Quill Yourselves the lead. Okay. So, uh... Which puts them in a fight versus the Pukumuku Purtoi. That's pretty gross. Okay. So, last match of round one. The Crispy King Gambits versus the Super Shy Sylveons. So, uh, this match has happened, but when the team is under different leadership. So, I'm going to tell you all the story of the Crispy King Gambits. So, Skits is the current coach. He was the original coach of the team. And this was not the case for most of the league. Um... Through week five, he piloted the team. Through weeks six through nine, he passed it off to someone else um, because he had a personal personal issue. But he came back for week 10 and he's back for playoffs. Um, so a few matches that happened were not under his purview, were not under his uh, running. And the match originally versus the uh, Super Shy Sylveons is one of these matches. I believe it's week seven again. Um, no, it's week six. Yeah. So it was the first game under the new management. Um, and I don't remember how it went. Let's see how this goes. I'm not going to pause the replays anymore. I think I'm just going to um, let them roll and just talk about the stuff that's important as it comes up. So Iron Valiant, Aegislash, Gliscor, really broken Pokemon um, versus a pretty standard, like, his team is pretty, pretty tame in comparison. He's got Mega Scizor, which is really good, and Dragapult, which is a great modern draft. Um, but... And Nidoking, which, like, he's very limited in terms of Nidoking switch-ins. Um, Gliscor is kind of a switch-in until you remember that Nidoking gets Ice Beam, and then it's not a switch-in. So he has to make right predictions in order to uh, navigate around the Gliscor correctly, um, or navigate around the Nidoking correctly. Um, so what's been happening in this game? Toxic Spikes are up. That's fine from him. Uh, Amoogus is going to get those away immediately. Mega Steelix came for whatever reason. Uh, takes nothing from the Giga Drain, starts cursing, okay. That's not a switch in. Okay, he throws away his Dragapult for no reason. I don't know why he did that. You can just go Rotom. But yeah, Rotom's doing a billion damage to packs. A lot of pressure on the packs. Um, ultimately, I think, especially with this Gliscor slept, like, if that were to happen in the actual game, oh, Ice Punch... Ice Punch instead of Ice Beam is an insane ring. Um, especially when that's after be physically offensive, but I guess it's fine. Um, okay. I believe this match ended in the favor of the... Uh, in favor of the... Crispy King Gambits. Barely. Um, but, like... I don't know. It's, it's really... He threw away his Dragapult. He... The Rotom gets a Hydro Pump, okay. Um, he let the, the Gliscor get slept. 
it's... I don't know. Call My Valiant is never going to get through Sylveon. Sylveon can always hyper voice it, and it's always going to kill. Um, or at least kill enough before he can get, like, a kill back off himself. Um, I think this is very much edged in Super Shy Sylveon's favor, but also he's prone to misplaying, which is bad. Um, bad for him, potentially. <laughs> um, okay, good full switch. Right, I think this comes down to a Scizor versus Aegislash on game, which Aegislash barely wins, I believe. Um... Yeah, look at that. With the with the King Shield. The little attack drop. Gets too much damage. Oh, doesn't even kill. Wow. This is all play, yeah. Yeah. So Aegislash 1v1's the Scizor, which is really solid. Um But oh wait no, he, he gets the kill because he doesn't Shadow Sneak? Wouldn't have killed, whatever. Okay, so. The Super Shy Sylveon's one last time. I thought the Crispy King Gambit's one. That's crazy. Um, maybe he needed to just Swords Dance instead of... Um, who could say? Who could really say? Um, I think the result's probably going to be kind of similar to this. Uh, Skits is a better player than k Twins was. And is probably going to bring better sets. Um, versus Octavio's still the same. He's still the same guy. Um running the same team and there's no massive changes I noticed that would change things um I think there was a, a little bit of sloppy play on both sides but this still really favors like he lacks a lot of he has to make more right plays the Christian King Gambits have to make more right plays than the Super Shy Sylveons do in order to win um and that's not necessarily hard but with playoff pressure I believe that. Octavio is not going to choke, and he's going to lead the Super Shy Sylveons to a win. So, that's my prediction as to how this shapes up. Um, which gets us done with the first round. Um, powerful, powerful, powerful first round that we've had so far. Okay, so let's look at round two winners. The San Juan Samurots versus the New York Neuverns. This is winner's semifinals. This match has not happened yet, I believe. Uh, is one of the few matches in the top eight which has not happened. Um, I think. Oh, this is dated. Where's the... I need to be looking at this. Pardon me? Yeah, okay. So, yeah. These two have not played yet. Um, so we just have to go off of little bits of speculation. Um, but it's kind of... Kinda, it's kind of interesting. Um, so, his main offensive threats, as I've previously mentioned, are Baxcalibur um, with a mix of like Tapu Fini and Meowskarada and that type of stuff. Um, what you have to look at for both of these matchups is does the team that's playing against the New York Northerns have an Annihilate answer? Alamola is one, so that's a yes. Um, and also screens with Lone Ninetales is a potential answer, which is awesome. Um, the final gambit annihilate that he's apt to bring isn't really going to do much here if he swaps it into, or if he final gambits into Aloe, because Aloe has more health than annihilate does if it's max health. Um, and look at the Latio switch in. Muck is a pretty good Latio switch in, so that's covered. Um, Birdseeds is a better player. Uh, it's, it's not looking good for, for Vinicky. Like, his team is really good. Uh, Iron Hands is really threatening, Griselli is really good defensively, Skarm is really good defensively. He has good defensive answers for Baxcalibur. Um, Skarm isn't really going to go down to anything that it does, but he has... I think he loses the War of Attrition, uh, especially considering this has Regenerator, this has Screens, this can Wish Pass to other things. He doesn't really have any Wish Passing on his team, uh, so if he has Life Orb or anything, that's going to get worn down. Uh, it has to be like a Rage Fist Annihilate sweep in order to get through what he has. Um, or Birdseeds has to misplay heavily. So I really give the edge to Birdseeds here. Um, I think that Birdseeds is going to do that. It is going gonna, is gonna to beat the New York Northerns and clinch out a winner's final slot. So that's my guess. Less analysis here, but my voice is getting kind of tired. So uh, let's, let's, 
I might be apt to do less analysis if it's games that have not happened already. Uh, so, Phalanx Phalanx versus the Garchomp Gladiators. Let's look at that. Um, hmm. I think this match happened already. Let's look. Garchomp Gladiators. It happened early in the season, I believe. Um, I think week two? No, week three? Yes, it did. It happened week three. So back when both of them were running different versions of their team. Um, and by different, I mean basically the same, but slightly different. Um, he still had Rotomo and he still had Garganical, which are no longer on his team. And he still had all of these mods. Um, so if you look at the matchup now, if you look at what he would bring over Rotomo and Garganical, there'd probably be a... Porygon in this slot, because Porygon is still fine into Keldeo. Um, Keldeo needs to be specs in order to do decent damage against it, and it likes taking um, it likes taking Regenerator from Glowking. Um, and instead of Garg, he would probably be running... <sighs> Volcarona has a hard time here, because of Hammerot and because of Keldeo. Um, what else would he run? Does he have Golden Go on his team? He better have Golden Go on his team. He does. Okay. He'd probably have Sandy Shocks. Sandy Shocks. So he has a reliable Cell Steel answer. Because um, that's important if you want to not lose to Soul. Um, the rest of these mons do lose to Cell Steela if he's not careful. Um, so Sandy Shocks is probably the bring. But let's see how this button here. Um, I'm going to actually turn up the speed for all these matches so we can see how they went a little bit faster. Okay, so Hammerot comes in, clicks Razor Shell, gets a little U-turn, nice little damage, nice little chip. Garchomp comes in, kills the Hammerot, that's solid. Darkrai comes in, he... Ooh, limited in terms of Darkrai switch-ins. Garg is the best Darkrai switch-in, but if this is a Hypnosis set, um, actually, Garg is immune to status, but he doesn't have, he doesn't have Garg anymore, so it's, it's tough. Um, Specs Golden or Scarf Golden Go is a potential answer to Gar or to Darkrai. I don't know if that's what this, this is here. We'll have to see through the rest of the game. Um, he's Life Orb, which is solid. Um, is this Cloak? It is Cloak. Mm. That's a great bring. Um, ooh, and he's and he's mixed. That's solid. Um, hmm. Yeah, he's not really that good at switching into Darkrai. Um, Mandibuzz has to be piloted towards that, but Ice Beam does, like, it took it out in this game, it's gonna take it out in any other game. Um, the Golden Go is not uh, Scarfed, uh, and it goes down pretty early, so that's a problem for him. I think if Daniel brings something like Scarf Golden Go in a potential rematch, um, it lets him fight back a bit offensively, because this doesn't, this doesn't like a Focus Blast or make it rain. This doesn't like a Shadow Ball. This doesn't like anything that Golden Go wants to do because um, especially defensive. Um, it's not at all especially defensive. And you don't like a Shadow Ball. You don't like a Focus Blast. Uh, and the defensive mons can also potentially get tricked, which would be bad. Um, but I don't know. Soul pretty handily cleans up here. Um, I think I'd have to give it to him. I think I'd have to give it to Soul. Yeah, let's let's see how the rest of this game goes before I make my prediction locked in. Yeah, triple axel doesn't kill. Yeah, Keldeo really does a number on his team. Um, it can scald burn the Garchomp. It can break through all of his defense. Uh, because fighting coverage is really good versus Daniel's defense. Um, it's it's tough. It's really tough. Uh. Yeah, and, and Garg's just going to get worn down. His only out from this point is Garchomp coming in and getting a skill shot boost. And potentially, it has to crit the Tusk in order to take it out. And the Tusk needs to not, ha not have Ice Spinner. Um, which is tough. That's very tough. But it just dies to Darkrai uh, Ice Beam, which is a problem. Yeah, I think Darkrai is re really a problem for Daniel's team. Um, he's going to get forced to be... I'm just going to close out this tab so I stop tabbing into things that I don't want um <laughs> yeah uh 
Darkrai forces him to run something specially defensive, but there's nothing great at that, uh, which doesn't get hit by a move the Darkrai has. Like, Assault Fest Azu loses to Thunderbolt, um, although it, he doesn't want to risk that with Darkrai. Um, he has a fighting chance, but I'd still give the edge to Soul. I think Soul has it pretty on lock, uh, so that's my read for that. Where's the, where's the gosh darn playoffs? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, a lot of upsets so far based on seeding. Um, the bracket turned out pretty weird in terms of seeding, turns out. Um, so, the New York Neuverns get knocked down to wherever Loser Vi goes, which is here. And the Garchomp Gladiators get knocked down to here. New York Northerns, I believe, were fifth seed. So let's look at losers semifinals. Okay. Or losers, not quarter. Losers round two. Losers semis are way up here. Okay. So uh, Daily Muse versus Gooey Googer Gang. This has happened already. Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, I'm going to pull up that VOD. If you've been enjoying the video so far, by the way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm losing my voice, but it's worth it for content. For content. Content's great. Um, I need GGG versus TDM. Here it is. Okay. So he brought Kling Clang, which was an automatic throw. Um, if this game is close, then I'm giving it to Mew because he brought Kling Clang and he doesn't need to have Kling Clang for any reason whatsoever. He didn't bring Tapu Lele for some reason. Um, I look at... I look at nobody's team. I see no great choice Garf Moonblast switch-ins. Um, it gives you a fighting chance back against Pow. It keeps you from getting swept by Pow unless the Pow is Garfed. Um, I don't know why he brought Kling Clang or what it's supposed to do to anything here. Uh, there's no mod on, the, on his team that it kills. I, I can put together the worst possible team that uh, nobody else can have. If he had Beedrill, Diancie, Torn, Torn T, Chen Pao... Uh, superior spite ops, then sure, maybe he loses to, to Kling Clang, but I don't see what the purpose would be. Um, let's look at this game. Okay, so he U-turns immediately on turn one. Um, that's fine, that's fair. Hold up. Pausing this recording real quick. Okay. Um, so, Cobalion's just doing Cobalion things, gets a little Thunder Wave off on nothing, because it, or on the Diancy, which is nice. Um, I'm assuming the last move on that is Rocks, which would be good. Uh, Bulk Up, Bulk Up's Aura is kind of, it's kind of ambitious. Um, it is faster than everything on his team, so that's pretty, that, that's arguably pretty good. Um, but you're not going to be able to get through the Umbreon. Uh, hopefully he Plasma Fist this turn, because if he doesn't, then he just dies. Because uh, Drain Punch, Plasma Fist is 180 base power, Drain Punch is 150. He drains. That's tough. Now he dies to the Foul Play. Okay, so a little bit of a misplay from Mr. Minato Nobody. Uh, but that's fine, because Chen Pao is in. And Chen Pao is chenning his Pao. Uh, gets a kill. Diancie, I guess, is his best answer, but, like, he has better defensive answers that are sitting... He does have better defensive answers than Pal, right? Uh-oh. Okay. So, I take back what I said about the matchup. <laughs> um, I think Chen Pao comes in, it clicks Swords Dance, it kills everything with Crunch. But you do need, you do need Scarf Tapu Lele um, to stop that. Um... Manaphy is also definitely a bring because you're so pow weak. Um, Manaphy is also good into Diancy. It's fine into Suicune. It, it can turn around a game where you're potentially getting set up on by something else. Um, it's bad in Zara Aura, but that's whatever. Um, you just need it for pow. Uh, whatever is better than Kling Clang, honestly. Um, but honestly, if you run this team plus Tapu Lele, then it's fine. Um, Letting this get paralyzed was a huge mistake, by the way. 
uh, staying, switching in on Cobalion or staying. Did he switch in on Cobalion with Diancy? Or did he just stay in? No, he switched in on Cobalion with Diancy. Why would you do that? That it can it can be Iron Heading. It can be setting up rocks. You're not Mega Evolved. What are you doing? Whatever. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm I'm a little peeved. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, he just dies. He loses his Mega Diancy for no reason. Diancy. If it has, I'm pull. I'm pulling up Pokemon Showdown. Play dot Pokemon dot Showdown. I'm I'm pulling it up so I can see. A potential Diancy set that could totally immediately win. Do you have any boosting move, Miss Diancy? Any boosting move to your speed? Do you have Trailblaze? You don't. Do you have Flame Charge? You obviously don't. Uh, status? Anything that boosts your speed? Rock Polish. Rock Polish Mega Diancy clears. It beats this. Beats this. It's it's it's. Yeah. What are you doing? What what are you cooking? Whatever. Um, oh, and he's scarfed. He's, he's choice on his moth, too, which is interesting. And he's choice on this. That's, mm, okay. I chalk this up to bad sets brought on Muse part, um, which is going to contribute to his loss here. Uh, Clink Clang, like, come on. You're at this much setup, and you still can't. Like, you're never beating a, a Gudra. Like, come on. Um, you just instantly lose the Gudra because you didn't bring whatever. Um... Like, come on, bro. Uh, I definitely have to give the edge to uh, Monado Nobody, uh, the Goo the Goo Yudra gang, because like, if he throws on his team building, then he loses. If he lets anything set up too much, he loses. Um, he has no great Chen Pao answers. I don't know how you how you go on from that scenario um so i think gooey good game moves on um let's go down to crest across the versus competing to the slow bros okay this is a ooh these two haven't played i don't think either um let's look at match matrix so i can see if they played or not because i have words about this matchup they have played and he won interesting okay i want to pull up the vod for that because i want to see how much he won by um, let's see. Uh, oh, that was week, literally week one. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, wow, he had Skeledurge. I didn't even know this guy had Skeledurge at any point. Okay, so this is a crazy, crazy run back. Um, if I look at this team, first of all, no King Gambit. Um, if he brings King Gambit, which he's been apt to do recently, then King Gambit's gonna do a lot. Um, but I look at the rest of his team, I look at everything that he has, and Scarf um, Spectrier comes in and gets a kill every single time. Uh, you don't even need to be Scarf, you can just be Spec Spectrier, and even King Gambit, I'm, I'm going to run the calc right now. I'm going to go to calc.pokemon.showdown and I'm going to look at it. Um, even if you're a really bulky King Gambit, uh, and you're Spec Spectrier, you were still doing so much with the Shadow Ball, you were not a switch in. Um, and it's faster than his entire team. The only thing that would be potentially faster is Tapu Koko, which I think speed ties. Um, so Spectre is phenomenal here. Uh, that 3-0 victory, I'm incredibly unsurprised by. Because I'm assuming... Okay, Electro comes in, that's fine. Uh, I think Electro's not necessarily the best here. Because Treads hard, hard stops it, and it's just a big sack of momentum. I think the way that you win if you're Fritz is you keep momentum going and you use that to your advantage. Um, Iron Press, Iron Press uh, Treads is, is really good to stop the um, Tinglu, but yeah. Uh, Dozo sort of sits on, like Dozo sits on Halucha, Dozo sits on Tusk. Um, Dozu doesn't sit on Leaves, but it does sit on Leaves if Leaves is only Trailblaze as an attacking move, because Avalanche will hit it back for decent damage. Um, <laughs> Electro Ball? What is he cooking? What is this guy cooking? Huh. That's wild. Um, hmm. Sets up screens. That's good. Life Orb. Okay. Tengu comes in. Probably just going to get his lefties. Uh, not a lot of great Earthquake switch-ins. Except for that. 
Rocks are good. Charizard can't be running boots because it's Mega Charizard Y. <laughs> Look at all these effects. Oh, that crit super, super mattered. Ting lose fat. Zard is, Zard is strong, but Ting lose fat. Okay, so the Charizard is functionally dead. Uh, Dozer comes in, takes a billion from Weather Ball, probably. Yup, that's a billion. Yeesh. Stalling out the sun, stalling out the screens, that's good. Do can he ever live this Weather Ball? I think he just has to sack. Yeah. And now, Spectrier, if this is Specs, which it should be, can just come in and win. Um, sub. Mm, I think that's a mistake. Um... I mean, I guess it's fine, but now he just gets to save a Charizard for free. Um, I guess sub is fine, because you don't need to be specs. Um, but, like, you do just get to force a kill every time if you're, if you're specs. Uh, so, I think you should be going with that. Anyways, uh, this matchup, Fritz wins it. He has a Spectrier that has no switch-ins. Um, even though Sweet AC's team is broken, he has a Spectrier that has no switch-ins. Um... I guess sub does stop him. It does make him ditto proof because if he specs, he loses the ditto. So forget everything I said about specs. Um, I think it's definitely uh, Fritz's favor. It's definitely in favor of that guy. So he would move on to here. Skibidi, Toilet, Slow Bros. Okay. Let me put in the logos for these two. I'm going to have trouble finding music that will last for the length of this video. Uh, Editor Alex, pop in right now in my face and say how you've been doing with, with uh, finding music. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. So, Quill Yourself versus Pukumuku Purgatory. Have these two played? I don't think they did. Let's look. Pukumuku Purgatory. Versus, they have not. So I just get to look at the matchup. Full sale. Okay. So, John Guy and Bionic right next to each other in the in the in the draft order. That's amazing. Um, hmm. So, Roaring Moon does do a lot of work here. He has to get Flame Body Burns with Moltres in order to stop it, um, or he has to offensively answer it with stuff like Scarf Garmantan or. Um, Potentially focus sashed Galvantula. Um, Roaring Moon, I don't think... If it Oko's Mega Mawile in one, um, I'm going to look at that calc actually uh, to see... Because that sort of has a bearing on the matchup. Um, let's say he's Dragon Dance. Yeah, okay. So if he's Booster Attack, then... He's usually going to be killing Mawile. Especially if he gets any degree of chip on it. Especially if he gets the plus one. Um, so... I should be using this tab for roster and keep this tab on the uh, playoffs. Okay, so I think he... Bionic needs to out-offense uh, John Guy, which could be feasible with stuff like Lando Eye. Uh, Lando Eye with Rock Polish, uh, Rock Polish, Sludge Wave, Earth Power, move to hit Corviknight, uh, <laughs> which I don't know if it gets moved to hit Corviknight. Um, Smackdown, perhaps, or just Gravity, uh, like he ran versus other guy. Um, that could potentially do, do a lot of damage. Uh, just Scarf Garmantan coming in, U-turning things, um, forcing Corviknight in to get up pressure with stuff like Galvantula. I think Galvantula is actually pretty decent here. Um, webs are good for Lando Eye to where you don't need to be Rock Polish. Um, you can just be Nasty Plot instead. Uh, and... Galvantula just, it does good damage to Volcanion. It does good damage to, to uh, Roaring Moon. does good damage to Corviknight. I think Bionic's the better player, but this is playoff strong guy who said he's going to be trying and his team is pretty good. I think Grimmsnarl screens could prove really dangerous. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this went either way. I'm going to give the edge to Bionic because I think his team is really, really broken. He has so many Ubers on his team. And ultimately... If he plays decent, then he uh, can easily out offense John Guy, but it's it's pretty even. I can see you going either way, so I'm gonna defer to seeding. Um, I think that Bionic will win, but it could very very easily go either way. Um, I think there's a pretty good likelihood that it ends up like the 
uh, match that he had versus uh, Sweet AC, except there's no King Gambit in order to save jo uh, John Guy. So that puts it in the favor of the Pukumuku Purgatory. So let me move his logo down too, because uh, I didn't do that. Okay. Okay. Super Shy Sylveons versus me, last match. So this happened, I want to say week four. It was the one of the, or it happened week three. Uh, I'm going to pull up the match for that. Real, real ones remember, real ones know. Um, this was still when I had my rain team, so it's going to be very much changed. Um, still an issue for my team is the Curum. Um, this is my best answer, but now I do have uh, Hoop on Bound, which can switch in on special attacker some of the time, which is good. Um, Hoop on Bound is definitely going to be really useful here for a lot of his stuff. Uh, Sylveon, it's faster than Sylveon if I put investment into it, and if I just, like, I'm, I probably just get to run Assault Vest with, like, Hyperspace Fury, Gunk Shot, um, Drain Punch, Psy Psychic Move, and it's pretty good. Um, ultimately, I'd say this favors me. Um... Urshifu is still going to do massive damage to his team. I just get to U-turn around on everything um, pretty freely uh, with a band or a scarf. Um, probably just banded on Urshifu and I just get to U-turn around on everything. Uh, Pharaoh's still going to be really, really, really solid here. He doesn't have anything that can offensively answer Ferrothorn. Uh, his best answer is like Nidoking. But if he chooses not to bring Nidoking again, then... Ferrothorn just sits on everything forever and wins. Um, and I think I'm a good enough player to wear. I'm going to I'm gonna beat him. Um, I can say that almost with a certainty. That I, especially with my team, which is better than what I was fighting in previously, I'm going to beat him. Um, so I'm not going to go to, but yeah. I am going to get that little victory there. Uh, make my little loser's bracket run. Get all sorts of video content for y'all uh, with my little rematch. So... That puts me, oh, in this match again. Yippee. Fun, fun, fun. So, let's look at the remaining matches that we have so far. Um, San Juan Samurai versus Phalanx Phalanx. This happened already. This was the consequence of a massive throw from San Juan Samurai. I think that he has the tools. I helped him build his team for this. Because um, we've seen his team already. Um, Tapu Fini is a great switch in to... Stuff like his... Let me see if I can get both of these on screen at the same time. I can. Okay. Top of Fini's a great switch in on stuff like Hammerot, on stuff like Tusk, on stuff like Darkrai, um, barring stuff like Thunderbolt. Um, Bax is threatening if I get, if he gets the plus one because strong ice type can tear through most of his team. Um, Keldeo is the main potential stopper to Bax. Uh, he gets screens up and that's totally... Like, that's pretty easy. Uh, Alola Muck sits on Darkrai and it... Like, just gets a free knockoff whenever it's sitting in the face of a Glow King. Um, Garmantan's also kind of decent. Um, big damage to Celesteela. It can do other things, too. I'm going to pull up the VOD uh, so I can speak on this match with more confidence. Uh, also, Week 7 VOD. So, that's recent. So, we have recent information. Okay. So, actually, let's go back to Team Preview. Okay, so he brought a spot through this game. Uh, which, what is he not bringing, which I think would be good. I think a Spoth is a little dubious when your opponent has Dark-type, Dark-type, Ghost-type, um, but it's still got potential. Once Darkrai gets out of the way, once Samurai gets out of the way, then it can do good damage. Um, what didn't he bring that he could have brought? He could have brought Meowskarada, which I think Meowskarada is pretty good here. Um... Knock off on this, you turn on this, like, an expert belt set is faster than most of his team, um, and it usually wins the lead matchup, um, especially if you, you're mixed with Leaf Storm for stuff like Tusk. I think if you brought that team, then he'd be doing a lot better. Um, there is a monumental choke here somewhere that I need to find. I think it's Greed with his Alamomola, I believe, which loses in the game. Um, so he stays in on the, on the Bayonet, um, expecting him not to gunk shot, doesn't Aurora Veil, which is great. Um, Mega Bayonet's actually surprisingly good here um, as an equalizing mon because the issue that I've noticed with Soul's team is his team is more offensively oriented so once you start like if you have strong enough stall which he has stall with, with 
Alamola Muck and uh, a little Nine Tails and Rotom Heat with Boots. Um, it's really, really difficult to make progress versus uh, the San Juan Samurats uh, unless you have really, really strong offense. And his is, it's really good, but it's slow. You need stuff like Bayonet in order to stop things with Taunt. Um, so great bring from him. Great prep from him. Um, gets the Skull Burn on the Tusk immediately. So Muck is already like basically invincible this game. Uh, Samurai's is only answer for the Muck. Power Gem is great. Uh, on the Glow King into the Rotom Heat. Um, you can clearly tell that Soul's trying not to fall behind offensively here. Because um, if it's a defense off, then uh, then the Samurats always win. Um, San Juan Samurats going against the Samurat. Imagine that. Uh, switches in on the Knock. That's fine. Goes into Aloe for free. That's also fine. Because now he just gets a Wish for free. Uh, gets the heal up Muck or gets the heal up Rotom. Ceaseless for the free spikes. Yeah. This can probably just defog it away, or just go back to Aloe, that's also fine. Boots on Aloe is, is good. Um, knocks off the boots, which is huge. Yeah, so Hammerot is a great equalizing factor here for um, Soul, because the spikes are some of the few ways that you make progress versus the team, especially when you can knock off the items eventually, and eventually you're going to get enough chip on the Aloe to where you're not going to be worried. Um, and Muck... Muck is, is, Muck's issue is, while it does stop most of your special attackers, it doesn't have a lot of longevity. My bad, I was just getting light. So, the thing about Muck is its longevity is inherently kind of limited, because it usually has to run an Assault Vest or Boots. Uh, Black Sludge isn't really an option if you're trying to be a super resilient, specially defensive tank. So, it's reliant on Alamomola to stay healthy. Um, ultimately, I give the edge to Soul. Um... I think Bird Seeds has a lot of... Because what happens in this game, if you watch, is he gets really greedy on staying in versus this Galarian Slow King. Um, lets himself get crit by a Sludge Wave, and that's what ultimately costs him the match. Because without Alamomola, his defense sort of crumbles. Um, so if Soul specs his team more into taking down the Aloe, then he can probably just take on everything that uh, Bird Seeds has to offer. But yeah, Galarian Diamond 10 might be able to help a little bit by forcing more threatening, or by threatening more offense versus the, the Dark Rye. But ultimately, this is probably going to be Thick Fat regardless. So it switches in on on Darm the same way that it switches in on Bax, same way that it switches in on Ninetales, same, same way it switches on everything else. Um, again, it could go either way, but I give the edge to Soul because I think Soul is... I don't know, just good player, great player um, with great fundamentals and the ability to win. Um, if he ha like Birdseeds is playing more reactive, and uh, the player who has to play more reactive has to get more plays right in order to win. Um, so I'm giving the edge to uh, Soul to win in winners finals. So that puts the Phalanx Phalanx from fifth seed to winners finals in my prediction. Um, which knocks the San Juan Samurots down to losers finals on the side that comes down from uh, winners. So let's go back over these semifinal matches. So um, now that all of winners is dealt with, let's go over all of these. So the Skibidi Toilet Solo Bows versus the Gooey Gudra Gang. Um, I, let me check to see if this match has happened already. Uh, I don't believe it has, but let's see. Uh, I need to go to match data. GGG. Actually, let's check match matrix. Data. GGG versus. It hasn't happened. Okay. So let's analyze this in the vacuum. Um, so, if we look at just the rosters, if we look at Nobody Ox's team versus um, Fritz's team, I'm going to bring up the file for Fritz's team so we can look at both of these side by side. Uh, give me a moment. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if I put you to sleep already at this point in the video. Hey, you know what? That's one of my goals. Um, because sleeping people cannot click off. Haha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, Chiyu Switchin is Hisui and Gudra, but Hisui and Gudra, like Hisui and Muck, or like, like Alolan Muck, is limited in the amount of times they can come in. Um, Get sat on by Ting Lu. Um, 
it's really reliant on if Fritz brings Rillaboom for Grassy Terrain to uh, heal up the Gudra, but he shouldn't be bringing Rillaboom for that reason. Um, physically defensive Weezing can beat Chen Pao um, because neutralizing gas gets rid of Sword of Ruin. So let's look at this calc. Let's do physically defensive Weezing versus Chen Pao. Say he's banded. Get rid of Sword of Ruin. Say he's neutralizing gas. Uh, yeah, banded Ice School Crash, barely two KOs, but he has to be locked in Ice School Crash. And it can get a Wisp off. Um, it has to be banded. If it's set up, then it definitely doesn't kill. Um, it's... Weezing is low-key a decent threat, or at least decent defensive mod. But really, like, the, the main reason that he would win the matchup would... Or the, the matchup versus Chen Pao would be because of his Dondozo, uh, which just gets to sit on it. Um... He could also be fairy type Silvali, which would be nice, but you, you're still at risk of being Icicle Crashed. And Icicle Crash is a decent move to click versus most of his team, except for Dozo. Um, Zara Aura is fast and threatening, but you just need to, like, Scarfa, a Chiyu or Scarfa Spectrier, and it gets taken out by a Shadow Ball or a Fire move. Um, Cyclozar can also be a decent switch in, assuming he's not physical with close combat. Ultimately, I think Fritz definitely has the edge here. Um, they both have broken offense. They both have the the uh, ruinous Pokemon, but Chiyu does better into Nobody's team than I think Chen Pao does into Fritz's team. Um, if he does bring Rillaboom, it sets up Sneasler to be pretty threatening, but Torn is really going to stop Sneasler from doing anything. So just relying on his special core of like Chiyu, Spectrier, Tinglu, Dozo, um, Silvali, and... Probably wheezing last, I think, should do enough work for him. Uh, maybe Zoom Electro can come here just to force more pressure on the Suicune, more pressure on the Tornadus, more pressure on the Mega Beedrill, um, bait out stuff like the Hasumi and Gudra so we can get in on it with Tinglu, um, and also bait out this Air Aura, which would lose a 1v1 potentially if it gets Leaf Storm instead of Electric Moved. So I definitely, uh, this is a quicker one because there is no match to look back on, definitely give the edge to these competing Toilet Slowbros. So that would move them on to playing for fifth. Leaving the Goo Goo Gang to get seventh, unfortunately. Okay, so <laughs> other semifinals game. Um, oops, I put Superstar Sylvia on instead of my name. My bad. I was kind of tired when. Ugh, a little earlier. So. Puka Puka Purgatory versus Lego City Blue Colors. This is another team that I only fought when I had the Rain team. Um, so I can look at that mod, but it's not really going to be that crucial. Um, Bionic, I would say, has my second worst matchup in the entire league. I think Bird Seeds is my worst matchup in the entire league. Um, just because I don't really have a lot that I can do. Um, like, Lando Eye is really threatening. Um, it's just a really threatening Pokemon. Uh, Galarian Darmanitan runs a train on my entire team. I basically need... Like, I can't outspeed it. Um, I can't out, I, I just can't outspeed it if it's Scarfed um, with anything other than Scarf or Shifu. So, it's just fucked like that. Um, I guess I need to be Scarfed or Shifu to... Um, if I, if I get this run back. Because Scarf or Shifu still gets a kill on this with Surging Strikes. Uh, Moltres makes its life annoying, but I can still try and work with that. Uh, it's just going to be really hard. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into in-depth in on battle strategy, but I can easily see myself losing this because in all the matches that we've played outside of one matchup in... Um, another draft league where my team matchup into Bionics was absolutely unwinnable for him. He has beaten me. Um, he has the he has the mind game on me. He has the read on me. So if I get to this point in bracket, it would probably spell the end of my season. But yeah, I'm going to be realistic. If I get further, then that would be great. Um, but I really think that that is where my season will come to the end. Getting seventh to Mr. Bionic Levis, um, which is kind of... It's kind of annoying that the fourth seed and the first seed have to play for seventh based on how the bracket is going. Um, there's a possibility that I get to play Vinicky here if uh, if Vinicky wins versus um, or if Vinicky loses versus Bionic initially and then Bionic loses to the San Juan Samurots. But yeah. Oh, oh, there's also a universe where I get double eliminated by the San Juan Samurots here. So that's totally fun. 
that's a great bracket. I love that to happen. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him ahead. Okay. So, uh, if I were to move if I were to move forward, by the way, then I'd play the Garchomp Gladiators. Uh, if I beat them, I'd probably play either the Skibidi Toilet Slow Bros or the New York Northerns again, which I'm fine with those matchups. So, really, if I can beat Bionic, I think I have a pretty secure at least second, because um, anybody in this league except for I'd say Bionic and um, Bird Seeds, I'm confident into that matchup. But those two matchups are bad enough to me where I don't feel all too comfortable uh, saying that I can win. Um, but let's move on to the next match. So this is Losers Quarterfinals. Okay, timestamp should say Losers Quarterfinals. Um, it's going to be Toilet Slowbros versus the New York Neuverns. I believe they have played already. I'm going to look at that um, after I copy over the Neuverns logo. logo. Okay. So, I believe that they have played uh, not too early in the season, but not too late. Um, STS versus... Unless they didn't, which would be really awkward. I should be looking at the match matrix so I can find it, but that's fine. They played week three. So this was before the changes to... Um, Fritz's team, and Fritz won this match, I believe. Um, let's look at how the game was played. So, let's actually restart to team preview. Um, this is a fine team to bring versus Fritz, uh, or versus versus um, versus Vinicky. Uh, Chiyu, its only stop here would be Heatran, uh, and I guess Mantine. Mantine's a good switch in to his primary special attacking force, but like. His big special attackers plus his big physical attacker core um, with Unburdened Sneasler and Grassy Terrain really come together to... They soften up weaknesses for each other. Um, these these two need to get Skarmory out of the way and both Spectre and Chiyu eat Skarmory for breakfast. And these two need to get Mantine out of the way. Mantine gets sort of crushed by um, a Wood Hammer or Grassy Glide or like a Gunk Shot. So they clear each other's checks. It's a well-built team. Um... I believe that's how the game goes in this case. Speed up to fast. Uh, and also, Tinglu sets up hazards pretty free. Um, he actually wasn't hazards this week. He was running Assault Vest, which is really funny. Because um, Mega Venusaur was a problem. Because uh, Sneasler can not break through it all too well. And Kill John Lennon, the <laughs> Chiyu, has uh, issues with it. So, Toxic on the Chiyu early is strong um Megan Venusaur being down is huge for Fritz in this game Iron Hands enjoys the grassy terrain I'd say more than Rillaboom does um it's just a fat mon that likes being able to heal I think bringing in G there was interesting because he could easily drain punch and just kill your thing um trading this for trading these two mons is I guess fine but you're potentially making yourself weaker to Skarm in the late game uh, Spectre is needed to, you need to click Shadow Ball a bunch of times, and you need one of the Shadow Balls to hit the Skarmory in order to still win. Um, that doesn't kill, which is bad. This Beth Drop is huge. Uh, Thunder Punch does massive damage. If that paired, then the game was instantly over, I would say. Um, if he's Metronome instead of Choice Specs, like he is apt to run, by the way, then this is great. Substitute, huge. Saves him, saves him in this scenario. Ooh, reads the Sucker Mind game. Okay, that's good. Just the plus two. Yeah, I don't think this is this is a Spectre sweep because Mantine should be able to fight back. Yep, but he softened up everything and now Electrode has no counters. Um, Electrode is a great matchup, or it's a great bring in this matchup, by the way, because Mantine is what stops these two. So once you get all the other things that, that wall them out of the way, then it can sort of run a train because the only thing that isn't weak to Electrode here is Annihilate. Um, and Annihilate... While it's a mon that can 1v4, it's probably not going to. Um, full switch easy knockout there. So, this match is probably going to go mostly the same. Um, I don't see a reason for him to really divert from his game plan strategy if he were to get the rematch here. Um, yeah, it's just pretty free win for Fritz, I would say. Uh, I would expect Vidicky to bring Heatran. Because um, Tran can be... 
it can be sort of catered to be good into Chiyu and good into Rillaboom. Um, Cresselia could also potentially be a bring. It's just weak to Spectre is the only issue. Um, I just feel like he's got a... <sighs> he has to make some changes in order to potentially eke out a win, but I don't know what they could be. Um, I think it's a it's a pretty cut and dry victory for the Skibi 200 Slowbros in this scenario. So, he would advance to here. Okay. The other match would be the Garchomp Gladiators versus the Pukumuku Pur Purgatory. This was... Okay. So, number two seed versus number four seed. Very, very, very good players both of them are. They are in the top four for a reason. They are two of the best players in the league. Their match was a little embarrassing, um, I'll say. It was... There were a good few mis misplays. Um, this ends in a 6-0. It should not have ended in a 6-0. Um, but we'll, we'll see why that's the case. So, um, <laughs> one thing about Bionic Lettuce, which I'll mention. Um, he says, one of the great things about Galarian Dimantan is... While Gorilla Tactics is broken and is why it's banned to Ubers, you have to prepare for Zen Mode as well. If you're going against any team that does not have priority, then Zen Mode can potentially sweep just by running like Belly Drum, Salic Berry, um, Substitute, uh, and then two attacking moves. And if you look at this team, there's no priority. The one priority mon that Daniel had, Azumarill, is not here. Even though I think Azumarill does pretty well into this matchup, which, by the way, this team with the with the Hasumi and Quillfish and the Pugamuku and the Chansey versus these massive gods, it's just the diversity is amazing. This is the power of the draft format, is you have mods like Pukamuku and Quillfish who earn a team slot alongside mods like Landorus Incarnate and Donanta. Um Daniel's team here is fine. Needs Azumarill. Needs Azumarill over something. Um, I don't know over what, but definitely over something. Uh, but let's look at this battle. So, leads Sandy Shocks into Garm. Switches out his Garm instead of just two turning. Uh, protects to scout out the Garm set. So, that's huge. Uh, from that switch, you might assume that he's not banded like immediately, but yeah. Uh, Maul Isle is in. Something has to die. Not necessarily because of Sandy Shocks can, can earth power. Uh, Lando I makes Sandy Shocks his son, so I don't know what the benefit of bringing Sandy Shocks is. If you're bringing it, it needs to be like dual screens, rocks, earth power. And that's that's your function, because hitting Mawile is all that Sandy Shocks is going to be useful for. This is the first mod that should be replaced with Dazu, definitely. Because um, neither of your stabs hit Lando, you're just kind of useless. And also your setup fodder um, for Lando. Like running protect is way too much of a momentum sink. Uh, this is a mistake by Bionic. So, he overpredicts Earth Powers into the um, Manda Buzz, expecting Golden Go to come out on the Sludge Wave. But this is an overprediction because, one, the Golden Go has to be Scarf in order to potentially revenge the Landorus. And, two, if he goes Golden Go, that's fine. You just, you just make the... You just switch into Chansey next turn or something. Like, like you just you don't have to make the the big play this turn. You're at plus two with your Lando, and Lando is faster than everything on his team, barring uh, Chomp pre Mega Evolution. And Chomp pre Mega Evolution isn't going to kill you. You're a Landorus with Sheer Force and Life Orb. You can just Earth, earth Power. Um, but he lets himself get Toxic, which puts a timer on him for no reason. Um, he roosts up with his with his Manda Buzz, gets himself back to full health for whatever reason. Um, or for a good reason, because that's that's important. Thankfully, he gets the heal on the Lando with the heal bell. But Golden Go is sub, not Air Balloon. Um, this is... <sighs> so, <laughs> something has to trade with this Golden Go, because it's behind a sub and at plus two. And what does he want to lose? Does he want to lose Pukamuku? I think Pukamuku is a fair amount to lose here. Um, but Pukamuku can't hit this back. It just lets it get to plus four. Uh, and then it definitely just wins, like, on the spot. Um, if you lose Lando, you lose all your offensive core. And he sacks his Lando to make it rain. Um, so the rest of this battle is a bit of a formality. Um, oh, the Garm was not... Garm was not Zen Mode. My bad. I'm thinking of a different battle where Garm was Zen Mode. Um, the Garm is just, just normal Garm. But... Yeah, uh, 
The Resonance Battle is, like I said, like a formality. Uh, Golden Go is boosted. Like, he's chilling. He can try and fight back as much as you want. But ultimately, Golden Go is going to come in and Golden Go is going to win. Um, your only answers to Golden Go are gone. Uh, it's, it's, you just don't have enough juice left. Um, also, the Flame Body Burn is huge. Like, it's, it's, this battle could be an email. Make it rain this and kill it. Yep. And then Garmaster, yeah. And then make it rain that and kill that. And then these two don't have any offensive, like, juice. So, Golden Go just wins. Um, this battle was an embarrassment. Um, if you go back to turn, whatever turn the Lando got the nasty plot up, turn seven. If he does not, if he sludge waves into this Mandibuzz, this is a whole different game. This is a whole different game. Um, I think that Bionic definitely has an edge. He just turbo through. I think now that he knows what to expect and he has it in his mind that if I don't throw, I can win. I give him the edge here. I think Daniel's great. I think Daniel can definitely clutch up. I don't know why he didn't bring Weavile into the Landers team. Um, but that's his prerogative. Um, I think Bionic definitely has the edge here. So I'm going to give this match to the <sighs> Pukamuka Purgatory. Which advances them to Losers Semifinals, I believe. Purgatory. Move these logos up. Move Daniel's logo up as well. Apologies for being slow. Take this time to enjoy the music. Enjoy my deep, deep, sultry voice. Um, all that noise, all that nonsense. Okay, so one more match to book until I get to lose his finals. Um, so three more matches to book, really. Um, Skibidi Toilet Solar Bros versus the Pukabuka Purgatory. This match has happened, I believe. Um, yes, it happened in what week? Let's dig through the match data. So the power of having an organized spreadsheet, I kind of didn't talk about this at all, um, but we organized the spreadsheet to all these little notes are the sets that they brought on the given week. Um, I'm sort of forgot to do the, I got lazy with doing the notes for the, the second half, but I've been managing the spreadsheet um, so that everyone can see it. It makes team building easier. It makes everything easier. Um, if you want notes from later in the season, that's tough because people kind of burned out in the season um, and people stopped posting their poker base, but that's, that is what it is. Um, so, we need PKP versus STS. PKP, FTX, PKP, STS. Week five. Okay. Okay. So, um, he no longer has Scizor, so that's, that's one big change. Um, so, looking at Bionic's team, he has a great Spectre switch in, he has a great... Um, he has a great Chiyu switch in in Chansey. Chansey is uber ultra fat um, special tank. And he has a great uh, Sneasel switch in in Slowbro. Uh, that's one of the best things about Bionic's team is that he just sort of like roll compression dot, dot JPEG of I'm ultimate spin F tank. I'm ultimate fizz def tank. I'm ultimate special attacker. I'm ultimate physical attacker. And then he has sticky webs to assist him with other stuff. Uh, Zygarde, which Zygarde fifty percent, which is always threatening. Um, I believe this match goes to Bionic because I don't think Fritz has a good enough way of stopping his his offensive pressure. Um, he doesn't have a great Lando switch in. Mega Odd knows the best he got. Uh, I believe he's changed this at this point because he has um, Silvali, which can be flying. It can be whatever type resists both ground and poison. Um, I don't know if that exists, but it can be that. Um, he has more threats that can potentially make this matchup easier for him. And I think he still has Mega Odd, though, if I look. Um, let's move this back to playoffs and look at the rosters here. He doesn't have Mega Odd, though. He does have Cyclozar, which is potentially a switch in um, if he's a Salt Vest. And it's faster, so he can just like he can just um, 
Ice Spinner with like Assault Vest, enough speed investment to be faster than Lando I, and then Ice Spinner to always Oko it. Um, that's a good Lando I switch in, good Lando I check. So the matchup has gotten easier. Uh, he can also be neutralizing gas on Weezing, but he just dies to a, um, or he can, he can be, um, he can just bring Weezing and just be, uh, levitate. Yeah. As long as he's not gravity, he's fine. Um, but anyways, going back to the match that we were going to watch, I don't remember how this went. So let's watch it together. Turn up to fast. So Zygarde, there's no good glare switching on this team. He probably just brings in this. That's fine. Oh, okay. So the strat that Bionic was going for this week was Thousand Waves plus Corn Forcer to get rid of the unaware and set up in the face of Dondozo forever. Um, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe. That's the strat. Um, or he's just a normal set with glare. That, that's also fine. Um... So Mega Mega um, <laughs> Mega Mawile has a lot of offensive juice. The power of huge power plus like base 100 attack lets it break through Dondozo without even boosting. Um, especially when you mix in the pair from the Zygarde, it makes things very difficult. Oh, and and the taunt to stop him from um, resting. Um, it's Mega Mawile is limited in terms of of uh, switchings here. He has to bring probably Silvali Fire in order to check it in the future. Um, but Silvali Fire is weak to this, weak to this, uh, and it has a hard time doing anything slow, bro. So that's an issue. Um, I think Bi Bionic's team is still really strong. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to... Very, very difficult for Fritz to find his way into this game. Because um, he has to play reactive most of the time. Chiyu gets... Chiyu gets stopped too hard. Like, all of his stuff that he has so he can be proactive gets stopped too hard by Bionic's defense. And his defense is too lacking in comparison to Bionic's offense. So it's probably just going to go similar to this game where he's just going to... Um, and, like, Chance can be calm mind and stop a, a sub Spectre from ever doing anything. So it's like, what are we doing here? Um, <laughs> it's just... It's it's hard. It's hard, and I don't think, I don't think Fritz's team has the juice. Uh, at, if, as you look at this battle, he gets worn down eventually. I don't, this doesn't end in a 6-0. Um, doesn't even end in a 4-0. But, like, Chansey gets the boost. Yip, yip, yippy do. You just... Ch Chansey can just win. Um, it's a pretty clear-cut win for Bionic if they do rematch. I think it's going to take a lot for Fritz to potentially clutch that out. If it happens, I'd be very surprised. It would be a massive upset, not only in terms of seeding, but in terms of the gaps between their team. Um, so that would put the, Puku, the Pukumuku Purgatory against the San Juan Samurots in Losers Finals, um, which would be a rematch? Did I talk about this already? I didn't, because uh, I'm expecting him to lose. Um, so that's funny. Uh, this would potentially be a semifinals match um, if... I lose, and if um, Vinicky loses, which is entirely possible, entirely reasonable as well. Um, so let's talk about how this matchup goes. Uh, I think these two have played already. I'm going to find the VOD for that. PKP versus S SJS, I think. PKP. Let's find it. 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 Oh my god, what, did they not play? Don't tell me they didn't play. Oh my god, they didn't play. Ooh, this is a fresh matchup. Okay. I'm curious how this would go. Okay. Egg on me for not looking at the uh the the uh matrix tab, which is Pulled up just so I can see who's played who. Okay, so we just mentioned Bionic's team, uber broken. Um, cont in contesting with Bird Seeds' team, I'm gonna bring up the Bird Seeds team so I can look at it alongside uh, the Bionic team. So Zygarde switch ins, or er, not Zygarde switch ins, Lando switch ins. He has a little muck, not a switch in because it is a. <laughs> 
Poison type. Um, Tapu Fini, weak to poison. Are you answering this defensively? You kind of can't. Can you answer it offensively? Yes, because Nine Tails can potentially be faster um, than Lando I. I think it is just straight up faster than Lando I, because um, it's 109 and Lando I, I believe, is 101. Yeah. Um, so, even though he has a bunch of ice types, he doesn't have a lot of good switch ins to Landorus Incarnate. Um, oh my god, I pulled this team up twice. That's crazy. Okay. Um,. So, if he positions his Lando well, it can get a kill and then force a sack, a sack war. Um, Rotom Heat is probably going to be the best that he can get in terms of switch-ins, but it still doesn't like a Sludge Wave. Um, so, Bionic can initiate a sack war by forcing Vax to come in and Ice Shard it uh, if he wants to ever potentially revenge, revenge kill it. Um, and, again, it's the same thing with the Roll Compression, Defensive Bonds, plus potentially Pukamuku, which can be here. Um, to stop backs from ever doing anything with setup. It can stop um, Darmanitan from really doing much. Uh, really, I think Pukamuku is definitely potentially a bring because of backs. It's a better backs answer than Slowbro is, I would say. Uh, maybe Slowbro is better because Slowbro is... Eh, Slowbro is weak to knockoff, which is a problem. Um, if you look at Mega Maw Wild switch-ins, he has... Rotom Heat and Aloe, but Aloe similarly to Don Dozo. It takes hits worse than Don Dozo does. Um, especially if he is set up on his Mega Mawile, but I believe that Aloe was faster than Mega Mawile. Um, I'm going to fact check that real quick. Mega Mawile. Mega Mawile is base 50. Alamomola is base 65. So it can potentially get a Scald off, and it can um, go first with Wish, which could potentially be nice. Um, I don't know. It's hard. It's really, really difficult for Bird Seeds to get into this game because he can't defensively turtle. Like, Bionic's offense is too strong with Lando and Garm and all that. Um, and offensively, Bax gets shut down by too much. It's just, it's difficult for him. Um, if I were to think about the way in for Bird Seeds, I'd say committing to Hail. Uh, Arc Result could be genuinely pretty good here because Electric Ice Stab hits uh, Slowbro, as well as hitting the rest of his team. Um, Arc Result would definitely be the path to victory. I would say something like like Bax, Ninetales, Arc Result, plus Aloe, um, Aloe, Feeny, Scarf, Jirachi, maybe, I, I don't know. It's, or probably Rotom Heat would be necessary. It's really difficult for Birdseed to this matchup, so I'm gonna give the edge to Bionic, because I don't think that Again, I don't think he has the sauce to get through Bionic's broken, broken team. Um, so that would put Bionic in Grand Finals versus the Phalanx Phalanx. Which this match has happened. I'm almost sure that this match has happened. Um, and I'm going to pull up the bot for that. That's going to be the last match that I'm talking about this video. So, thank you for y'all who stuck with me. Let's pull that up. Okay, so this is the game that I was talking about with the Dandy game. So if this is Grand Finals, then this is a great story. Because this Garmanitan here is not Gorilla Tactics. It's not. Now, he says that he likes to only bring priority, or he only likes to bring uh, Zen Mode Garm versus a team that doesn't have priority. And this team does have priority. It has, specifically, um, Samurott. Samurott can be running Aqua Jet, it can be running Sucker Punch. But... As you see, he neglected to bring it this week because Samurott wants a billion different moves. It wants Ceaseless Edge, it wants Sacred Sword, it wants um, Razor Shell, it wants Taunt, it wants Swords Dance, it wants all sorts of different moves it can fit into its kit. Um, so it can't always afford to run a priority move, especially if you don't think you need it um, versus a particular team. But let's look at how this match went down. So, leads Mawile versus the potential Hammerot lead versus the potential Tusk lead. That's totally fine, totally fair. I don't know why he went into that, because if you just play roughs, that's, like, completely fair. I think it's just a sack, because, like, Hammerot just goes down immediately. Um, there's nothing that's going to be doing versus uh, Mawile that would matter. I think he just literally just did it just to, to sack for spikes, um, which I think you're better off in the team builder just bringing 
uh, Sash Hammer on lead, and then just click Cease's Edge twice. But that's just my opinion. Um, and he can defog away the hazards with Moltres anyways. So this uh, Decidueye knocks off the boots here. He turns out. Totally fair. Keldeo comes in. Keldeo is an interesting mon here, by the way, because its stabs are not good versus um, Slowbro, but it still has enough offensive juice to wear. Like, look, look at that hydro pump damage. That was a crit, did 70, but even if it wasn't a crit, he would still be doing 50. He just has to hit two hydros. Um, and Secret Sword hits Chansey. So Keldeo is actually like annoying to switch in. He gets around his broken defensive core of Slowbro plus Keldeo by cheating, or Slowbro plus uh, Chansey by cheating. Keldeo cheats. Keldeo's a cheater mod. It cheats. Um, but, we'll see how this game goes. Uh, he brings up the Zygarde on what he assumes is spec damage, which definitely is spec damage. Um, this is probably a sack, because he wants to sack it so we can get a little para off on this. Um, switches this out on the Zygarde. Free regenerator chip for the Slowbro. Free healing, straight up. Um, sets up rocks. The Moltres no longer has its boots, so it's potentially dead if it cannot get in. Um, he's just going to keep body pressing this force to get the milk drink. That's fine. Mixes up with the Scald there. Great. Does not get the burn. Goes back into Moltres. Risks potentially dying to a knockoff, but that's fine. Roost first. I think the Roost is kind of greedy. Um, or at least I thought so at the time. But, because I think Defog would be better just to get the rocks away so that Garm is potentially better. But, if you think about the rocks functionally, this Garm is trying to get to Salakberry range if it's Zen mode. The rocks make it easier so it doesn't have to Belly Drum and Substitute. The rocks means it just has to Belly Drum in order to get to Salakberry range. So, keeping up the rocks is actually a good thing. Um, he's basically forcing it to... Soul's idea with bringing in the Dark Rai is stopping a defog, but Bionic doesn't want to defog here. Uh, that's a higher level play that is why I think he's going to get to Grand Finals, because he's smarter than the average player. Um, so, just sacks his Moltres here. The flinch doesn't matter because it's a sack regardless. Um, plan is bring this in. If this is choice Dark Rai, which it's not, um, he hits the hypnosis, by the way, immediately, which is great. Misses his focus blast, which is karma. Um, gets two turns to sleep. Okay, fair. Hits the second focus blast, it's fine, knocks it out. So he's limited in terms of switch-ins. So he scares him out with the Galarian Darmantan. Because if this is Scarf Darmantan, like they are apt to be, then Darkrai gets completely fucked. Um And if it's and that's a fair play, because, like, everyone brings the real tactic. That's why this mom was banned. It's got 140 base power, um, or 140 base attack, and an ability that gives it a free choice ban. Why not just bring uh, Gorilla Tactics every week? But he did the one thing that could potentially throw. He probably should have known when he saw the 75% health instead of the 76. Because um, normal Garms would make it so that they don't die to a bunch of Stealth Rock Chip. But he belly drums on this turn, gets the plus one, eats his Salak Bear, so now he's faster than everything. Triggers his end mode, and now Earthquake just sweeps. Earthquake just sweeps. So if this happens again, it is lights out for Soul. And it would be a hype grand finals, but he's prepping for it now. He knows that Zenbo Garm is definitely a possibility. It beat him, it 4 0 him uh previously, so it's really got potential. Um but let's look at the matchup outside of the gimmick. So if you were, if he's properly prepped for that, which he will be if he gets to finals, um, if this is the finals match that's happening, he will be properly prepped. So let's think about how this can go by looking at the matchup in the roster page. So how it should function normally, I'm going to bring up Soul's roster again so we can see that. Uh, where is my thing? Phalanx, Phalanx. There we go. Okay. So, the Phalanx, Phalanx. Um, let's look at offensive and defensive checks for both of them. Darkrai stopped by Chansey if you wanted to stop it with Chansey. Um, Chansey just gets a little pressure too hard by Tusk and Hammerot and etc. Um, 
the way the way that he was running the game in that game, Mawile is a fine second chancey. If he's bringing an offensive garm, that's an offensive answer to Dark Rye. Um, I think our offensive garm is fine here because Icicle Crash from Scarf uh, Garm is still going to be doing good damage to Celesteela. I'm actually going to look at that damage. Um, let's see. Let's see the damage. Let's see the damage. Okay. So Flare Blitz would knock out the Celesteela. Ice Cold Crash for 2 KO. So Celesteela isn't even a switch in. His best defensive switch in isn't. There isn't one. Um, he needs Mega Bayonet to trade with it for with, with, with Destiny Bond, and that's that's his defensive switch in. Or he needs Scarf Keldeo uh, instead of Specs Keldeo. But even Keldeo doesn't even want to take like a, a crash that well. Um actually it does. Shout out Keldeo for being a resist. Resistances are fire. Keldeo is actually way built bulkier than I thought it was. Power being a mythical mod. Anyways, um So looking at this actually, um uh, check to Mega Mawile, non-existent, nothing wants to switch in on a play rough, uh, except Celesteela, which him not bringing Celesteela that game, I think is a bit of a throw, but perhaps he was saving stuff potentially for playoffs, I don't really know, um, because Celesteela, the only mods that it has issue here with are Galvantula and Moltres, because, like, Landorus can't hit it at all, um, I really don't know why he didn't bring Celesteela, but... Listen, he's piloting the team, not me. Um, let's flip it in reverse. Garm switch-ins, basically non-existent. Lando switch-ins, Celesteela. Uh, Mawile switch-ins, Celesteela. So it's... Celesteela is pretty <laughs> pretty hardly... Pretty pretty worked here. Has a lot of work to do. Um, if, if he wants to stay in the game and have defensive checks to his mons. Um... Obviously, at the end of the day, he has Hammer Rock. Hammer Rock can set up hazards and put further pressure on the Garm, put further pressure on the Mawile, put further pressure on the Chansey and the, the Zygarde, um, and the Slowbro. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a difficult matchup to say. Without the Zen Mode Cheese, I think Soul has an edge because Celesteela is strong enough uh, defensively to... If he keeps it around and supports it well enough with stuff like Miltank, with stuff like Decidueye, with stuff like Darkrai coming in and trying to get damage and chip and stuff... I think, provided that Steeler doesn't get overworked, it has the edge. Um, Mega Bayonet, I think, would be a good bring, potentially, in a rematch scenario, because it can stop Cheesermons from cheesing. Um, but, yeah. If I were to rate the matchup in terms of numbers, I'd say it's like 55-45 uh, soul favor. Or it's just straight up even. Like... It's really difficult to call a winner here, but I think that Soul has the lead. I think that Soul would potentially win, and I think that would make Soul the champion of the entire league. Um, unless, of course, I beat Bionic and I beat uh, Bird Seeds, in which case I'm beating everyone and I'm winning. Um, but yeah, that's my analysis. Uh, clocking in at like almost two hours for this video. Holy crap. Um, if you're still watching, thank you. Like, genuinely, I really appreciate you. This is a long video. Um, I hope you like the sound of my voice. I hope you like the little analysis that I'm doing. I don't know how in-depth it was, but I try my best with what I can show. Uh, all these teams in this league are pretty good. I've enjoyed my experience playing in it so far. Um, I enjoy the cash prize if I potentially win, but if I don't, making these videos has been fun. Um, upload schedule for playoffs is probably going to be... If I'm not ambitious, I'm going to be uploading a game a week on Sunday, and it's just going to be kind of delayed in terms of, like, I, I'm going to be uploading games that I played, like, two weeks ago. Um, if I'm ambitious and I get my games fast and people accept my games fast, then I'll be uploading maybe twice a week, but we'll see. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell. And I'll see you guys next Sunday for the first game of playoffs versus the San Juan Samurats. Bye-bye.